I'm actually going to sit down because if I don't look at some of my notes once in a while, I will get completely off track. Um, so my, my topic today is um, our personal connections lost in a digital world. Sub-question being, where the hell is my career going and why did I decide to do this 10 years ago? About 10 years ago, um, the fashion industry, like so many others, was hit by a perfect storm of change. Perfect timing for me. I had just been named editor-in-chief of a major fashion magazine. And that's when the foundations really started to shake. You know, little did I know at the time, but I was at the beginning of a really disruptive period of communication. You know, we had changes in retail, changes in basic publishing, and then social media was just starting to take off. And of course, nobody really knew what to do with it. I was told that fashion, as I knew it, the industry that I had joined, was going to be completely different, completely changing, and it's true, it was. But I was also told that major digital brands coming in would wipe out the need for a personal point of view, which was completely wrong. Um, took me a while to figure that out. You know, it was the beginning of a hugely exciting time, and that democracy and fashion really did introduce a new form of personal communication. Our emperor does wear digital clothes. So 10 years later, you know, from the time I had that first question, an industry that was once completely intimidating is now really exposed. Fashion has never been more democratic. You know, I think of things like um, television shows like Project Runway and how quickly that developed into personal style blogs and omnichannel communication. Individuals can vote on what we like. We have a say. We can be fans. We can curate our own collections online. We're no longer dictated to. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my mom saying, well, you, your skirt must be exactly this length. Now nobody cares. And I think that came from just this big change in how we view ourselves and others. You know, magazine editors are being squeezed out of their front row seats by savvy bloggers who dress like, you know, crazy people, but they have millions of followers online. It's such an interesting new um, vision and voice. You know, we've thrown open the doors to a whole new world of integration, and it's only just begun. Now, I've had, you know, a really unique opportunity to view this business, and fashion is, is really an interesting business. I'm sure from the outside it looks incredibly crazy, and it is. So I first started, you know, reporting from the front row as a traditional brand editor, and now I'm really able to see how the backstage works in this newly created role that I have at Holt Renfrew as vice president fashion editor, one of the finest luxury retailers in the world. So in terms of, you know, to put it all in perspective, you know, in the mid-90s, when I first started covering the shows in Europe, I'd meet the photographer at the end of the day to review all of his shots. We would sit for hours, hunched over a light table, looking at thousands upon thousands of slides. We would have to go through every collection we saw, look at everything, narrow, narrow our choices down to two or three, you know, which is similar to what we did last season here at Holtz. And then we'd do that for every single show. Some days we went to 10, you know, 10, more, 10 or more collections, so we're looking at really literally thousands of slides. I would get home, I, worked, I lived in Vancouver at the time, after all the fashion weeks were over, I would write one big report, it would be published in the Vancouver Sun newspaper three weeks after the shows happened, and it was presented as news. So, you know, let me tell you the, how, how quickly things have changed now. So, you know, I started in print, and now that's just one medium I work in. You know, today I can have a front row seat from my office at, at um, Holtz Head Office. We're at the corner of Bamblore downtown. And I can watch shows as they happen a world away. You know, these are our, um, our Holtz Instagram page. I can capture shots that happen from someone's live stream or on style.com, post it to our accounts. When I'm on a catalog shoot, I can post an Instagram video. I'm curating content in a completely different way from all of this information that's coming at me from around the world, 24-7, it's all coming through my phone. You know, the speed of, of how I'm working compared to how when I started is completely different, but I also have at my fingertips more information than I could even possibly know what to do with. So, you know, every event, every new designer launch, every promotion at Holt Renfrew is viewed from all of our channels. Our catalogs, our website, our social media platforms make us a storyteller who can connect directly with customers. 
So one thing that we um, introduced this past season is we revived our print catalog. And at the time, somebody said to me, well, you know, print is dead, magazines are dead. Parts of that I agree with, but there's something about a print catalog. What we did is we used the opportunity to make it more special, more luxurious. We used top international models, one of whom was just named to the Forbes top 10 list of highest paid models in the world. You know, I can only imagine how much she makes. Um, and we really gave it a whole new luxury spin. And as much as our customers really like looking at catalogs online, they like seeing the, so the social media snippets that we revealed, there was something about the luxury of a catalog, the luxury of print. And many of them even said, I'm going to keep this. It's a collectible. You know, so there's no denying the importance of digital. You know, I'm sure we're all the same. If you misplace your phone, you're in a complete panic. But it really hasn't changed our need to personally connect. You know, community has never been more important, whether that's our community store or our community of our own social media followers. And social media really thrives when it's given a personal touch. So one of the models that we used, Lu Wen, she was the one who, she's number five in the world of top 10 paid models. Yeah, I got that right, from Forbes. She has really given her social media platform a personal touch. She has more than 6 million followers on Weibo, which is the Mandarin social media site. She has more than 150,000 followers on Instagram. She has really created a brand and a longevity for herself by connecting with people. And I see this over and over again. Um, Holtz is also on Weibo, and we speak to our customers in English and French on Facebook, um, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. You know, so for us, it really is more than just shopping. Um, it's, it's an experience that builds bridges between the digital and physical worlds. Retail really is a stage. It's an entertainment center. So one example of how we're combining um, digital with a personal shared experience is a new beauty bar that we have at our newly renovated store in Yorkdale. So you'll see on the slide on the far left there, that's the beauty bar. So there's nothing more personal than having, you know, the ladies here will know, than having a makeover, having a makeup artist right in your face, changing your look for you. You can, you can go to any one of the counters we have in Yorkdale, then you can go to the beauty bar and there's a camera in the screen on the far end. So you can take your picture, you can choose to share it on the big screen behind the bar with all of the other customers, or you can have it emailed to you so you can share it on your social media sites. So now, the customer is the editor. She's creating her own content and she's deciding how and when she wants to share it. Another really great example we had of a huge uh, retail success where we bridged the digital and physical worlds was a special event with uh, celebrity footwear designer Christian Louboutin. Now Christian, he's from Paris, he has a very large social media following of his own, but there was nothing like the experience of coming in and meeting him. You know, if you see that flash of red soul that, you know, is seen on all the red carpets everywhere, it's, it's by Christian. We had more than 350 people come to meet him, including some people who lined up at 8 o'clock in the morning, bringing their Louboutin shoes, which can run up over a thousand bucks. You know, yes, men's shoes can be over a thousand dollars. And the great thing here was he would personally sign each of them, and he added hearts and stars and flowers to the bottom of these shoes. So for our customers, he was creating a collectible that they'll have forever. What they did was then share it with their social media um, networks. You know, some of our customers have a lot of followers. We also built a video program and a social media program that supported this event plus his exhibit that was at the Design Exchange this summer. And it really was a great example of how we could create an experience that was great for sales, but that also really worked in with our, our digital um, platform. So that's Christian. And, and then we've also partnered with some really great um, digital personalities who've built really exciting personal brands with just a brilliant idea, a camera, a laptop, basically nothing. Um, a good example of that, the girls from the Coveture, Man Repeller, um, Erica Behrman, um, known as Oscar PR Girl. So Erica is a 30-something PR pro from New York, and she has completely created an incredible um, brand for herself and brought a new vitality to Oscar de la Renta. So she's his senior VP of communications. Oscar has been in business for more than 50 years. He's dressed everybody from Hillary Clinton to Taylor Swift. 
So we invited Erica to come to the store when we had um, a trunk show of Oscar's clothing. We had so many young women come to meet her. They couldn't afford anything from Oscar de la Renta yet and may, not, may never be able to, but they wanted to meet her. They viewed her as a friend and someone who was an entry to this, ex you know, this very glamorous, exotic world and also bringing a whole new relevance to a designer who's in his 80s and how they've embraced social media and really to create a strong personal point of view is noteworthy. So, you know, international brands have been created by featuring an outfit a day on a blog. You know, just someone, you know, here's my new look for the day, here's my camera, now I've got this massive international brand. So just to give you a second, uh, back up for a second, when I first started covering the shows in Paris, nobody cared what the audience was wearing. Today, you have to pass through a gauntlet of literally dozens, I think if you just click through, right through Jane, there's three of them. Um, you, have to, you have to pass through a gauntlet of literally dozens of street style photographers anxious to take a picture of what these crazy people are wearing. Like seriously, who would ever wear that stuff out in real life? But they're wearing it to get noticed, to get featured on a street style blog, to be in a street style magazine that they publish in Japan. It's how they're creating personal brands. Some of these women aren't even invited to the shows. They're just coming to be seen, they're getting their pictures taken, they're then sharing them with other people. Um, it's, it's really quite phenomenal. And while a lot of these street style blogs started off as mixing high and low fashion, today it's all about designer fashion, including couture. Now, um, couture is the highest level of handmade clothing made to measure from Paris. A gown can easily cost $100,000 or more. And when fashion became more democratic through Project Runway and these various shows, many people said to me, oh, couture is dead. People won't spend that kind of money on fashion. Couture has exploded, and it's reached a whole new level of customers, mainly young women, younger and younger women, from the Middle East and Russia. And the hottest street style stars now are the Russian fashion editors and socialites. It's kind of funny to call them street style stars because I don't think their feet ever hit the street. They're going from one limo to the next. But they're actually creating online personalities and brands through what they're wearing on Instagram and Twitter. And you know, and while I roll my eyes at a lot of this crazy shit, um, <laughs> It really has been great for fashion. It's been fantastic for the industry. It's, been, it's made people much more excited about personal expression. They're not afraid to wear and try certain things. And then they come into the store and they want the look. They get that feel. You know, so for a major retailer, it's a really, really exciting time. You know, we've welcomed a lot of these digital personalities into Holtz to come and meet our customers and share their stories. This is Tommy Ton who is from Oakville, Ontario. When I was the editor-in-chief of Flair, I used to buy him dinner in Paris because I was so worried he was starving. And he was out front of the shows just taking pictures of people, never invited inside. And now, you know, he's, he's a featured photographer on Style.com, I believe in GQ. He does fo um, photo essays for Harper's Bazaar. He is an international photographer and digital star based on his blog. Um, and I think he's fantastic. So, you know, as well as the interest, you know, in couture I was talking about, the, in, the um, interest in original design and innovation has really exploded through blogs and social media. You know, some designers, this is Karl Lagerfeld from Chanel, he gets mobbed wherever he goes. His cat, Choupette there, um, has her own Twitter account. <laughs> so, <laughs> to answer my original question, you know, personal connections have not been lost through to digital integration. My job as an editor is so, so different from where it was when I started and is going to continue to change at a hugely um, rapid pace. I can't wait. I think it's so exciting. I love Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and I think it's just terrific. Um, but digital on its own can be very, very isolating. And that's where the role, uh, my role comes in at Holt Renfrew. You know, there's nothing that we love more than to share a story, to connect with people. You know, and that's our goal as we continue to innovate, you know, through and bridging the digital and physical worlds. We'll continue with our catalogs, all of our various social media platforms, and I believe in another two years, it will be completely turned inside out and upside down again, and I hope to be first in line. Thank you.